Talk with Jock. An hour of interviews and your calls with Jock Wilson. Some very sad news in the football world as we learned of the passing of Keith Evans. Keith Evans, the founder of the Calgary Colts, the longtime general manager of the Calgary Colts. Now, if you follow junior football in this city, you know the name Keith Evans because he was synonymous with junior football in this city. As a matter of fact, not only was he involved with the Colts junior program since its inception way back in 1965, he served as the team's general manager from 1969 all the way to 2019. Of course, the highlight was the back-to-back -back Canadian Bowl championships in 1989 and 1990. This is an organization that sent a number of players to the Canadian Football League, including Stampeders Darcy Kopp, John Ferzani, Scott Dybert, Pat Hines, Harry Kruger, Travis Arnold, Tyler Lynam, Johnny Ferzani, Spencer Wilson, and current team member Richie Sindani. Now, Evans, he was Calgary's Booster Club Sportsman of the Year in this city in 1988. He was inducted into the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame in 2018. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Keith Evans here on Sports Talk with Jock. It's a real pleasure to be joined by Debbie Ellickson. Debbie Ellickson, past president of the Calgary Colts. When we talk about junior football in the Calgary Colts, I think of two names, the two Keiths, Keith Evans and Keith Kendall. Just your thoughts on what Keith Evans meant to junior football in the city. Everything. I mean, I don't even think it was just to our city, I think it was to the entire conference and to the league. The Colts would not have existed if it was not for Keith. When he first started with the Colts, it was basically, here's the keys, we're, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> and he was pretty much left with the keys and discovered that there was a bunch of bills owed, but he managed to pull the organization up by its bootstraps and bring in some people. Certainly when we went to the 1989 and 1990 Canadian Bowl, we had an incredible board of directors. He was the glue that kept everything together. Every generation of Calgary Colts will tell you the same thing. But even at the league and conference level, he was well known. He was the voice of reason whenever there was a argument in the room. He's the guy that stepped in and mediated and came up with solutions. That was his gift. It's interesting because we talk about his passion. We talk about his 55-year volunteer commitment. What, what was it about junior football with Keith Evans? Why, why was he so passionate about it? Well, I guess you could say the same for some of us who were involved. The ones that did not have kids it seemed to be the ones that were the most passionate about it, if right. you can figure that one out. It's hard to put into words. The players, they kind of made your day. It was watching them grow when they came to the team as rookies and when they left. It was so much joy in seeing them grow into young men. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't all easy. It was challenging a lot of times and oh my goodness, I've watched Keith go through a lot, but he he was definitely the glue. He was not only the one that held the board of directors together, came up with the funding, he was also the confidant of everybody, including myself. Did I ever tell you the first time that I met uh, Keith Evans? I actually met Keith Evans before I came to Calgary. I was a salmon fishing guide on the west coast at Stewart Island. I had no idea who Keith Evans was, and I apparently guided Mr. Evans when I was a salmon fishing guide. Then I, I moved to Calgary. I become a young, aspiring sportscaster. I'm at a sportsman dinner. <laughs> I wouldn't even say it, but I was at a washroom, and I was relieving myself. And Keith walks into the door, and he says, you're Jock Wilson. I said, yes, I am. He says, you guided me a couple of years ago at Stewart Island. And you know, I quote, you've got to be kidding me. Then I got to know the whole uh, Keith Evans story and became part of the Calgary Colts with you, Debbie, with those back-to-back uh, -back, uh, Canadian Bowl championships. You talk about the glue, and you talk about the highs and lows for the Calgary Colts organization. The financial challenges and struggles at times. Without a guy like Keith Evans, there's no way this program would still be here today. Oh, no way. And what a lot of people don't realize is football 
isn't cheap. <laughs> so, it's a lot of money to put a program together. It's probably even more now, but back when I was with the team, the equipment and all the travel and everything, you were running a half a million dollar operation totally on volunteer labor and on fundraising. A lot of it came through the government and it was Keith Evans who got the 50-50, which created a lot of money for the club. It helped a great deal. The Stampeder is, I have to give George Hopkins a, a shout out because George Hopkins also helped us so much and saved us so much money because some of the older Stampeder equipment, he would just donate to our club. So we didn't have to go out and always buy shoulder pads because George would have a couple he would give to us every year. That was quite helpful. But Keith, oh my gosh, the hour. I would say from the moment he woke up to the moment he went to bed, it was Calgary Colts. And when he was working, because he used to travel, he used to go to Argentina because he was a geologist. And he used to work on horizontal wells. So when he was gone, I would kind of take over some of the management stuff. Oh, I'd say back before our championship years, he was traveling to Argentina and all over the place working on wells. And But he was always hands-on. He would phone, and he never missed a beat. He went on all the road trips when he was in town. He organized everything right down to the lineups. The three of us, me, him, and Doug, would be moving equipment from Optimus Park to McMahon Stadium every game. <laughs> when I first met Keith, he was luring me to go on the board. <laughs> he took me off for lunch. It was a cannery row or some place where they just had fish on the menu. I didn't want to tell him I mm. hate fish. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, and, and the smell of the place was like, <laughs> because I just don't like fish. Fair enough. So, but I found something on the menu that I could eat. Anyway, I thought, okay, I'll join the board. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to the ballpark with him, Optimus Park, in right. the day. And what, he actually wired and built that equipment shack, if you recall that built that himself with a little bit of help from Shrubbies and players, but I was there when he wired the darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the type of impact. that was the type of impact that he had on, uh, on junior football in this city as well. Uh, yeah. uh, Debbie Ellickson is a uh, past president of the Calgary Colts. We're, we're sort of reminiscing a little bit about Keith Evans, of course, the passing of uh, Calgary Colts founder, longtime general manager, uh, passed away uh, recently, and you've stayed in touch with him. I did. He, well, he was my best friend, and we had the kind of relationship where if it was four o'clock in the morning and you needed something, you're there, you know, for each other. It didn't matter what it was. <clears throat> and I feel the same way about his wife too, but. Um, yeah, Carol was a rock star. Yeah, it was, yeah, that's the kind of relationship. Yeah, we never lost touch. Well, you don't become a sportsman of the year in this city. You don't become a member of the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame unless you give back to the community. That's going to be my memory of Keith Evans because he had the passion for the Calgary Colts, he had the passion for junior football, and, and he wasn't a taker, he was a giver. He was, and probably one of the best gifts he ever got. It can't be overstated enough that when we were inducted went to the Alberta Sports Hall of Fame in 2018 for those two championship seasons. Oh my God, that was such a great reunion. But the fact that he was there and we got in, and that's thanks to a lot of work came through a couple of players, uh, head man by uh, Steen Weimer. And I'm sure that every one of them, the first thing about that honor was to see Keith get it. I agree 100%. Well, well, Debbie, thank you so much for, for sharing some stories. I, I wanted to reminisce a little bit about Keith Evans because he was important to the city of Calgary, was important to junior football, and as a past president, I really appreciate your time talking about him. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Chuck. Past president of the Calgary Colts, as we uh, look back on an amazing 55-year volunteer career for Keith Evans. I shared this story at a banquet for Keith 
and I don't think too many players know this. I, I did tell a few of you, but I'm not sure how many. I can't remember what year it was, but we all remember that Keith had an aversion to swearing, even though he swore worse than the rest of us. And he used to sit by himself on the other side of the stadium because he thought nobody could hear him swear. <laughs> We were taking a bus to Regina. Keith and I used to sit in the front. The players decided that Scarface would be the next video to play. It started to play. I'm watching Keith out of the corner of my eye. If anybody has seen that movie, Al Pacino uses the F word just about three times in every sentence. <laughs> every time that F word was said, he kept flinching every time that word was being said. I think it took about five minutes and he got up from the seat. He quietly marched over to the video player, pulled out the tape and sat down. Nobody said a word and no other video was played on the way till our next stop. Nobody copped to whose video that was. I think he even yelled, whose video was this? Nobody caught to it because they couldn't. Because you know whose video that was? It was mine. <laughs> anyway, I shared that at a banquet. I'm not sure how he felt about it, but the other story I have is from Windsor. A lot, of, a lot of people didn't see what was going on behind the scenes. The security guy at the hotel that we were staying at he took a disliking to our team right from the start, particularly our head coach, Keith Kendall. There could have been a few complaints about the noise. We had a hospitality suite. And of course, they always shut us down. This security guy kept ragging on us the whole time that we stayed in this hotel. And he kept shutting down our hospitality suite early <laughs> and knocking on people's doors. He knocked on Joey and Dougie's door. Doug was our equipment manager and Joey was his helper. It was like two in the morning or something, he knocked on their door and complaining that there was a noise coming from their room. Well, they were sound asleep. This guy was complaining about everything. When we came back after winning the game at the stadium and Keith Kendall is carrying the trophy on the way into the hotel, he takes one look at the security guy who's frowning. <laughs> of course, you know Keith. He said something to him. Oh, I suppose you're going to call the cops. Five minutes and guess who's knocking at the door. <laughs> so Keith Evans had diffused the situation as he is so good at. They were mediating. The, the security guy and the cops are on the one side of the door and Keith and a bunch of us are on the other side. And Kendall's packing and he's pissed. He had every right to be because the guy was an idiot. So Keith Evans says, I'll see how we can solve this. What the security guy wanted was an apology. Well, anybody that knew Keith, that was a big ask. Keith Evans did finally convince him to do so. Keith Kendall he opened the door and said, sorry, slammed it shut. And that sufficed. So Keith Evans and myself and I think Jack Thompson were on the elevator going down to the main floor and the door <laughs> opens <laughs> and the security guy is about to come on. Well, that is the first time I've ever seen Keith Evans almost do something. <laughs> He literally had his fist out to go swing at the guy. Of course, Jack stopped him before that would happen. Jack had to defuse that situation, but it was a story that nobody ever saw. Keith was always the mediator. That was just the one time that he actually 
lost it <laughs> because this guy was relentless. He was poking and poking and poking and complaining about everything, whether it was warranted or not. There are so many stories about Keith Evans and we all have our own stories. He had so many stories. We used to travel together all the time and my God, nobody could spin a yarn like that man. Just hearing the stories of his best friend Owen and all their <laughs> escapades and the things that they used to do, that, that's worthy of a movie. Anyway, I thought those stories would make a couple of people smile. I apologize, Carol. <laughs>